which is quite a stroke of genius because in that singular creation Anna managed to contain existence in a way never dreamed of before where everyone was actually contained as themselves within a container a system which they didn't even understand or could never understand because they are forever busy in conflict with themselves they are the ultimate polarity that creates themselves and within that obviously simply created the splits and polarity which was the things from sexuality for instance because that is one of the ways that the higher forces could be contained as an expression and an experience was to contain or build a point of desire to experience or express it which is sex and the method or the mechanics or the methodology or the goodies with which to actually access it to let it build up to a point where it can take, be taken to a higher level of expression so that one can experience this peculiar uh, elixir of life that was discovered in energy called the Kundalini orgasm wonderful stuff I mean the ultimate drug of existence was discovered and it became quite a play to make sure you had this drug in a ready steady supply and no matter who you have to spite as long as you have your free will to get your injection your orgasmic expression you will do it at all costs so knowing that that is the inherent point all I knew I had to do was create an infinite path which was created as we explain it in the deception of infinity how the infinite path was created so that there is no beginning and no end dimensionally and that you are actually moving through multiple lives in which you are experiencing yourself around fascinatingly enough your free will within the context of your spitefulness which caused you to keep on moving in exactly the same cycle you're not really having to be contained because you're containing yourself within the principle that you want to be right at all costs and because you want to be right which is impossible under the primary law of the universe which is balance you are always taken to the point where you are wrong and therefore you are continuing then attempting to move back to the point you are right in that you are creating energy the energy that you require you use the excess energy was then siphoned off and sent to heaven which gave heaven all the power over earth to direct it and implement ways of containment and control of this beast that's been let loose on existence called man as spitefulness because man in spite of what man could be because imagine you are in spite of it all you are actually creating this reality every single thing that exists here from the bug to the plant to the animal every single thing and the very nature that exists here is actually your own nature that is an expression how does that work is quite fascinating because in the nature of how a planet operates its inhabitants that which is from the planet determines the outcome of the planet because it is that part of the planet that interacts by inserting the mind consciousness system the principle of thought, spitefulness and free will within the being through the physical they could actually direct what is created in the physical so in the first seven years of a child's life the child is pre-programmed both through uh, genetics, DNA and through the influence of environment and the principle of structural capturing which is the point of seeing and a point of st structural hearing which where you hear to place into containment and design that which is required within the physical to keep 
the being occupied within the principle of spitefulness by feeding it constantly conflicting ideas and principles that unbalance their existence so that they may never question where they are, who they are, why they are, and what is going on. And within that, then, eventually what manifested, obviously, was the very system, which is, as you see today, television, machines, motor cars, everything that you find today, the electrical grits, the, the forces that is here within the laws that is here, have a look. They, you can't unbalance them in a way. They are balanced within the principle of your own fear. Your own fear which is inherent, your distrust in each other, and the principle that through spitefulness and power, a fascinating thing has been developed. A control which is based on compound interest which is based on compounding, which is based on genetics. The genetic lines were placed specifically within the principle of from father to son. Control was built in. And that was done under the principle that there is apparently a God which stands and takes responsibility for our spitefulness. Therefore, eventually, by doing that acts, that acts that is prescribed, this God will absorb us from our spitefulness and that we are acting in the name of this God and that this God in its very nature is spiteful as you would read it is written which then for those that follow this God of this reality they would be the special ones that is protected, that is promised a special experience after death. But in that, obviously, a peculiar problem emerged, that those that followed this particular line of free will, spitefulness, would deliberately destroy the earth, the source of everything that they exist as because they would see it as unimportant because what is really important is only after death. Why was that done? It's because the real power was in the physical. How do you make sure that the real power get never, will never be used? You make everyone believe that the real power isn't here and that it is here after. Now you're here and you're living for the hereafter. Automatically you have no power in the here because apparently you'll be having power in the hereafter. And then what happens is when you reach the hereafter, that which you are and were, which were programmed unfortunately, which is your physical body that was creating the reality as you see it around you, the real power of expression of God of creation is no more and what remains is that spitefulness the thoughts that which existed inside you in secret the part you call you the part you call your free will the part you call your choice that's what remains and have a look to what degree you are dishonest about that I mean that is your absolute guideline in your existence. That is the point where you apparently make up your mind. It is where you apparently make a choice. It is where you apparently decide what are you going to do with your life. <laughs>